Hi viewers, this is the fourth episode of this Dell Optiplex build. Although there's really not much left of the original Dell Optiplex. Not too sure if that means that the Dell Optiplex was a really good starting place or if I'm just really slow and milking these videos. So I recently got married. The videographer and photographer have given me all of their raw data. It's a lot of data and it's almost filled up the current SSD. So I've bought myself two terabyte of HDD. What the plan is to do is to have one drive mirror the other drive in a RAID 1 format. Microsoft have storage spaces so hopefully that piece of software can prevent me from having to buy a, a controller. So I've had to buy some SATA cables as well. It wouldn't be a video of mine if there wasn't some movie magic. I have already done some cable management because I needed to make space. So that's the introduction. Let's get into this. So on the motherboard, we're going to be placing the SATA cables here and here. Now that the two SATA cables are installed, we need to then pass them through to the other side and then install the drives. This is the cable tidying I was talking about. I have now created space here before all the cables that are being kept up for all these cable ties were all around there. I'm now going to free up the space and get the caddy trays. Now you get to watch me put these drives in the trays. There are a couple of these hidden behind the front panel. They are the perfect screw to screw in your hard drive. Never throw a screw away. Both hard drives are in their trays with all four screws. We have our SATA cables here and in my cable tidying I also added in an extra SATA power cable. Now I have to install it plug them all in, switch it on, and then we get into the software. Such satisfying noises. Okay, that's the install done. Now we have to boot up the machine to see if it all works. That's the sound I have to get used to, is the sound of discs. Before it's been quite quiet, now it's Sounds like an old school computer again. Okay, seems fine. Before we start, I want to say that I chose the one terabyte hard drive because this is an older computer and two terabytes isn't supported by old windows. That's all this is, old windows. So I don't know what the cutoff is, but to be safe, I just went for one terabyte, one terabyte. You're going to want to right click your start button and then click disk management. This is now showing my two drives which are unallocated. So I want to um, select MBR, master boot record. I have my two drives here, both of them say online. So now we have to allocate each of our drives to a letter. So you right click, new simple volume, and this wizard makes it very easy for you. So next, next, you can choose a letter, so we're gonna go D. Uh, make sure you leave, perform a quick format ticked. Um, then next. Finish. Excellent, now we have to do the same thing to the second drive. Now we have to go into the free software that Marks has provided. And this is called Microsoft Storage Spaces. So start, so we're looking for Manage Storage Spaces here. Uh, we want to create a new pool and storage space. So I've just selected two drives that I would like to use to create my pool. Now, although I selected drive D, for one hard drive and then drive E for another hard drive. I'm actually going to be removing both of them and then replacing that one drive with just one new drive with a mirroring drive. Therefore, we can select the drive letter D again. Resiliency is another word for helping protect your drive in case of a failure. So I'm going to be using two-way mirror, which is everything that is on one drive will be on the other drive 
and if one drive fails, I have all the data on the other drive. There are other types of pools, um, which include some parity or parity. Um, this means that the data is going to be spread across the hard drive, so your whole Word document won't be on one drive, it'll be across two drives. With parity, you can then lose a hard drive and then install another hard drive to replace it. Create storage space. And that's it. That took minutes to install two terabytes, allocate letters to the disks, then use those disks to then create a pool, which we are using in a RAID 1 format, which is effectively just mirroring. Mirroring is good because you always have a, a backup of your storage. However, you do lose 50% of your storage that you purchased. If you have more drives, say like five hard drives, you can set them up in a RAID 6 configuration. There you can use, I think, three or four hard drives and then you lose one to parity, um, which you're losing less, but you also have to have five drives um, and the space for five drives. So we'll start with this and then maybe down the road we will have to buy um, a NAS or um, just add more storage to this one. With the fall in Bitcoin prices, the fall of GPU prices, therefore we get to buy another GPU. Um, I haven't had a GPU in my computer for like two years now. And when I'm creating my videos, uh, especially when I'm adding fusion elements to it, uh, it's 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 killing my CPU. So there's definitely a bottleneck there. Um, RAM, I'm I don't need any more RAM. 16 is is more than enough. I rarely go above eight gigabytes um, being utilized. I have been researching into uh, replacing the CPU. The only reason though I haven't bought a CPU and replaced this one is I'm, I'm looking for the GPU first. If the GPU would take the bulk of the workload and leaves the CPU alone, um, then I won't need to buy a new CPU, but if the CPU is still being fully utilized, then I would have to go to the highest spec CPU that this computer will take, which is like an i7, but like fourth generation. This CPU runs a lot hotter, but that's not a problem for me because I have already upgraded the CPU cooler. Let me know, is the Octiplex a great platform to work from or am I just milking these videos? Milk or platform, I'll catch you next time.